Hey, thanks again for joining me for another episode of Spirit Anointed Leadership. So, so grateful to have you with me today. And again, our desire through this podcast and VCast is to empower, equip, and encourage you as we go after the mission that God has given us together. Now, I want to spend some time talking with you today about the power of retreat. You know, in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, the disciples had just come back from doing ministry that Jesus had sent them out to do. And they come back and Jesus looks them in the eye and says, you know what? Let's get away from the crowds for a little while. So they get in the boat and they go to the other side of the lake. Now, what meets them there, of course, is a whole bunch of people that end up following them. And that's when Jesus feeds the 5,000. But let's forget that for a minute. What I want to talk with us for a few minutes today is just the power of getting away and retreating. You know, I think so often what happens is is that our schedules just get packed, and I get it. If anyone can understand a busy schedule, I get it. I totally do. But there's an invitation on the table from Holy Spirit to enter into retreat. I once heard a quote. I have no idea who said this, but I once heard a quote that said this, he who is always available or she who is always available is rarely transformational. In other words, if we pack our schedules so full that we don't have time to actually hear from Holy Spirit and get away every once in a while, then chances are good we're not going to have transformational thoughts and transformational things to say. So often, those things that are so deeply meaningful that come out of our soul come because we actually were quiet for a while. We got away for a while. So I want to talk with us today about three different types of retreat. First retreat I want to talk about is just a personal retreat. And I really want to encourage you to think about what does a personal retreat look like for you? Now, when I say personal retreat, you probably think I mean absolutely alone. And yes, there are times when that is awesome, and I really want to encourage you to do that. I have good friends in ministry who end up going to monasteries or go to Catholic retreat centers where they end up hanging out. And some of these are absolutely silent required. So it's a silent retreat. And sometimes those last a day or two or three. And sometimes I know they've last for as many as five days where you basically give up your phone and you, uh, you might look at it for to see if there's an emergency or something like that. But basically, you give up all technology, and it's just a silent retreat. You don't talk to anybody. You go to meals, and you don't talk to anybody at these retreat centers. And it's a purposeful retreat to just get alone and be quiet and listen to the voice of Holy Spirit that sometimes only whispers. And those times can be powerful for us. So yes, when I think about a personal retreat, absolutely, I'm thinking about times when we're away. And by the way, can I give you a little permission? So often I think what happens is is we go on a personal retreat and we feel this angst to actually rest. Like, oh, I got to get in my Bible or here I've brought some things to, to dig into, maybe a book that I'm wanting to read or something like that. Can I encourage you? I really agree with Pastor Rick Warren when he said, sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is take a nap. (laughs) You know what I highly recommend when people go on um, a personal retreat is just plan on taking a nap and just relaxing. You know, so many of us go so quickly through life. We go at such a pace that our soul And our physical bodies are just longing to rest. So don't feel guilty if you get to a retreat center, if you get to a hotel, if you get to wherever it is that you're going, and your body just says to you, can we just rest and be okay with that? Then, once you get there, then just invite Holy Spirit into that moment. I really want to encourage you on your personal retreat to invite Holy Spirit to say what he wants to say and to communicate what he wants to communicate to you during that time. And don't go into it saying, well, it has to be this or it has to be that. All it really has to be is something between you and the Lord. That's why you're there in the first place. Now, I want to kind of do a hybrid, if you will, of this first retreat, this personal retreat. Sometimes we'll go on retreats that are personal. In other words, we don't necessarily know the other people that are on the retreat, but we're there in a corporate setting. I know that sounds, you know, kind of like contradictory, but I don't mean it to be. Let me tell you what I mean by that. 
For four years of my life, I was part of this thing that Ruth Haley Barton put, puts on um, at the Transforming Center called the Transforming Community Retreat. And they meet four times a year. Um, and you go for basically two full days. It's Sunday night through Tuesday at about noon. So not quite two full days. And you're there corporately. You're there with other people. But there are definitely some personal times during that retreat when it's just you and Holy Spirit. And I am a high proponent of those. I just think sometimes to get away and then to have some community time can be really healthy. And what I love about Ruth and the Transforming Center and the, transform, the Transforming Retreats, the Transforming Communities that she does is that it's this wonderful mix, if you will, of engagement and retreat. Engagement and retreat. And I want to highly encourage you to think about that and see what that might mean for you. I know that the Transforming Community Center for me was huge. It was, it provided the rhythms. You know, I, I'll just be honest with you. Every time I went, I didn't think I had the time to go. I never went, never once. I went, again, to four years worth of quarterly retreats. So that's 16 retreats, right? I didn't go to one of those retreats thinking, ah, I've got all the time in the world. Let's go into this retreat. Never once. Every one of those 16 retreats came at a horrible time. <laughs> I just like, there's no way I can go. Absolutely. But the fact that I was spending money to go meant that, okay, I'll go. And uh, each time Holy Spirit met, met with me. And each time I was so glad I went. Again, I had some solitude time and some time in community. So I just want to encourage you. There are other people. Uh, Ruth and the Transforming Center are not the only people that put on those kinds of retreats. I just want to encourage you to think about that kind of retreat and how it can actually breathe life into your soul. One of the things I got out of the Transforming Center for me, for Chris Conrad, was what Ruth calls, what other people call, Ruth is certainly not the only one, a rhythm of life. And I know uh, there's a song, but, but here's the deal. What I really want to encourage you is to think about what is it that you need to do on a weekly basis to keep your soul healthy? What are the things you need to do on a monthly basis to keep your soul healthy? What are the things you need to do on a quarterly basis to keep your soul healthy? And what are the things you need to do on an annual basis to keep your soul healthy? I really want you to think about that. Matter of fact, I'd love it if you've turned off the podcast right now and ask yourself those questions. What do I need to do daily, monthly, quarterly, and annually to keep my soul healthy? By the way, one of the things that, I'll just throw out an example, and this might be an extreme example for you, but I have a favorite place that I go. I rent out this dumpy motel room in Santa Barbara, California, and, um, and I've been going there for years, and I stay in the same silly room, but it's right across the street from the beach. Now, on both sides of me are these really expensive hotels that you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars a night to stay in. I stay at this one that's a dumpy motel, but I love, I, I love the setting, and Holy Spirit has met me there so many times. So part of my annual rhythm is to go to Santa Barbara for three or four days every year. Now, have I made it every year? Nope, I haven't. But I'll tell you, the years that I am disciplined and actually go, wow, it's so life-giving to my soul. So I, wanna, I want you to encourage yourself, you're worth it, and your soul needs it, your soul is thirsty for it. Please, 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 Enter into a, a rhythm of life that's healthy for you. Hey, one last thing about this. I was with someone the other day, and they were talking about the fact that they went on a retreat all by themselves for two or three, day, two or three days. And they said, and that's the last time I'm ever going to do that. Like, being all by myself killed me. Hey, if that's you, don't beat yourself up for about it. No, not at all. Just recognize how Jesus wired you to be and enter into that. If a a retreat of solitude and silence makes you want to like crawl up a wall, then don't do it. But do a retreat of some kind that will actually minister to your soul. Okay, second kind of retreat that I want to talk about is this idea of doing a retreat with leaders in your church. Now, they might be staff, they might be lay leaders, but this is the time for you to get away with some leaders in your church and just to begin to think about where is it the Holy Spirit is guiding us and directing us? Or maybe what is some 
what are some real things, some areas of growth, if you will, that we want to see happen in the life of our church? And we want to spend some time actually listen, excuse me, listening to and, and honoring the promptings of Holy Spirit. And see, when you enter into what I call a discerning retreat, then it's not just all about content, content, content. No, you're going to have some content there. But I really want to encourage you, make sure you shave off some time. You save some time, if you will, to make sure that you are spending time in discernment. What is Holy Spirit saying to us? Again, Acts 15, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. I know so many people that go off on a, on a strategic retreat. Here we go. We're going to decide this and this and this in life for the church. And they come home with their great laid plans, but they haven't actually listened to Holy Spirit. They didn't give themselves time to do that. There's no time to do it. I really want to encourage you. Yes, there are times when you should absolutely get your leadership team away and go pray and go seek the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, just make sure you give him some time and some space. Go after what he wants for the church. And by the way, don't be surprised if you come back with some things that are very different than what you thought you were going to. Because so often Holy Spirit comes to us in different ways than what we originally thought he might. That's okay. Listen to his promptings and go in that direction. Okay, third kind of retreat. And this is a lot like the second one, but it's very specific. And that's what I would call your board or your governance body or your elders retreat. Now, how is this different than that second retreat that I just talked about? Well, again, we've got a personal retreat that might happen in, in, all by ourselves or in community. We have a kind of a church leadership, like who are the influencers in the life of the church? And we're going to go discern some things. Maybe we want a new discipleship process. Maybe we're trying to discern how are we going to revamp our outreach, that kind of thing. That's the second retreat. This third retreat is specifically for those who are in the discerning process by being an elder or being a board member and hanging out with them on a retreat. Now, I have to tell you, that I'm a huge fan of this. I just really believe in it. And I really believe that a great foundation for this kind of retreat is Ruth Haley Barton's book, Pursuing God's Will Together. Because what that does is it helps us to understand how is it that we can discern God's will together in community. Now, when you get away with each other, I just want to highly encourage you, even if you've done life with these folks for a few years, oh my goodness, get together and start asking some questions. Before you ever get into the book, before you ever get into anything, start asking some questions. Like, for instance, hey, talk to me, go around the room and say, talk to me about your spiritual journey. How did you happen to come to Christ? And then ask them, what are some spiritual milestones that have been true in your spiritual life? When are some moments when you have seen God really show up in your life? Ask them questions about, hey, when are some times when you've gone through the dark night of the soul? When is a time that's been really difficult for you as a Christ follower? Talk about those kinds of times. Spend perhaps an entire two or three hours just getting to know the people in the room and letting them get to know each other. Again, they might have gone to church for years with each other, but they've never actually had real, meaningful, spiritual conversations have those. Allow this team to begin to get to know each other like perhaps they've never known each other before in a really good way, in a real positive way, in a real helpful way. And I obviously recommend that you do this retreat sometime in late summer or early fall, just when you're beginning the church year. I would absolutely bring a board together if I had a real job like you guys, so many of you who are leading churches or leading parts of churches, maybe a ministry staff or whatever, I would totally get them away either just before or at the very beginning of the ministry year. And I'm, I'm spending that time intentionally and we're just pursuing Holy Spirit. And so after I've done that time of helping board members get to know each other, then I want to talk about some discerning things. I want to go through a book together. And again, you can choose what book that is. It could be on discipleship. It could be pursuing God's will together. It could be on outreach. It could be on anything. Whatever it is that you sense in this next season of the life of your church that you need to have a greater understanding of. Awesome. Go through that. But then as you go through that, again, make sure that you leave time for Holy Spirit to speak to you. Make sure, okay, we have just like talked about this book now. Maybe send everybody out to be by themselves 
and give them an hour or so and then come back and say, what did Holy Spirit say to you in that time and in that space? See, there's a reason why Jesus said, get away, get away. We're so action-oriented, and I appreciate that. But again, it's in those times when we stop, we slow down, we actually come off the field of play, and we allow ourselves to get rested. We allow ourselves to be at a place where the coach can speak into us and into our lives, where the Holy Spirit can say things that he's been wanting to say to us for a while, We've just been going so fast that we haven't heard his voice. And what I find is, is that if we'll actually take the time to retreat personally, as a church leadership team, again, a ministry team or whatever that is, and then as an elder team or a board, whatever the governing body is, if we'll do that, so often Holy Spirit will meet with us and it will be transformative in our lives and in the lives of our churches. Please, please, please. Think about what does it look like for you to make sure that you're living in this awesome rhythm of engagement and retreat. Engagement and retreat. Both are necessary and both lead to a life where we are filled with the Holy Spirit and able to operate in the things of the Holy Spirit with great power and with great fruit so often. So, Thanks so much for joining me today. What I pray is that coming out of this time that you will actually take some action steps towards the things that you need to do of retreat, personally, leadership team, and as a governing body. Now, do me a favor, will you? Would you please follow, subscribe, and share this content wherever you take it in? That would really be a blessing to us. And finally, would you do me a favor and also leave us some comments? We really wanna serve you in the places where we can serve you best. Thanks so much. Let's go out and let's be spirit-anointed leaders together who are engaging and retreating in rhythms that produce health in our soul. Have an awesome day.